First one, 22 years old, ex-cheerleader, was starting to put on weight. Her job was more sedentary. She wasn't as active. She trained with me four times a week in the first month. In the first month, she dropped 10 and a half inches on her body. No! Oh, wow. Chest, waist, hips. Oh, wow. Now, other areas she put inches on, but it was in muscle. Mm -hmm. And like she went up an inch on her bicep. And she's like, I don't mind that. I don't look like I have chicken wings now. <laughs> but I've experienced for explain to you and the stuff I've shown you, do you see value in what I have to offer? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Once you see that and actually experience it and realize, okay, I'm getting something that is personal, that's tailored to me, that is for me alone. It's worth more than what I'm actually charging. Yes, this goes on just above your knees. <laughs> and we're going to step back here. We need some space to do it. So, so what we're going to do, start with the right foot. There? Yep. Okay. Make sure you got some tension on it. Yep. Yeah. We're going to step out like this and down. <laughs> <laughs> Feet together. Step the opposite way. Yep. Come, keep the knees bent. Yep. Like you're almost doing a sideways squat. One more. Uh, <laughs> feeling it in your thighs? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we're actually going to go backwards. Okay. <laughs> so, stepping back. Come on. <laughs> Feet together. Yep. Stepping back. Together. One more. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Yep. <laughs> Generally, I would make you do length of the room back and forth at least four times. Oh my goodness. And you this, walk out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most people call that the blue circle of hell. <laughs> but uh, I find it is an incredible tool and there's so much more I can make people do with this. Uh, loop bridges, dead bug, uh, hip thrusts, so much more that, especially with a glute bridge, <laughs> keeping the knees out, while you're trying to lift your hips off the ground, you'll find it really hits all the glutes a lot harder and a lot faster. And one of my clients, she, she goes, by the time she did 10, she's like, that's it, I can't move again. <laughs> uh, yeah, well I started at Good Life Fitness, so I had pretty much top of the line equipment to use. Cable machines, dumbbells, squat racks, you name it, we had it. But I found, uh, pretty much everything that we did with those machines, I could simulate this. <laughs> Every exercise. Lat pull downs, all I needed is a beam. Mm -hmm. Loop it over, start pulling down. Mm -hmm. Bicep curls, simple. Just like that. Seated rows. Kind of seated rows. You get you to feet like this. Sit down a little bit. Yep. <laughs> Grab those. Start pulling like this. So you're yep. <laughs> Come forward a little bit. Don't let your arms fully extend. And pull. Keep your shoulder blades tight together. There you go. One more. Head long. Good. Core though is one area I target all the time because a lot of people don't realize is that your transverse abdominals are the heavyweight drinkers of muscle groups. Basically, they'll sit there, they'll, they'll take on anything. 
when they give out, they try and pull in the obliques, which are maybe one or two, three, two to three drinks, and then they're done, okay? Once they're done, they try and pull in the rectus spinae, or the low back muscles, okay? Those guys are beer cap drunks. They cannot handle the same amount of strength that your transverse abdominals can. That's why a lot of people say they have low back pain. If they have low back pain, it's because their TVA is not strong enough to do what they need it to do. And then you develop the low back pain. I find with a lot of people, once I've started working their core harder and harder and harder, their back pain goes away. And they're just like, I didn't know that was possible. And it's just doing simple core exercises that helps strengthen everything. It strengthens the obliques and the low back muscles, but it focuses in more on the TVA. That's the nice thing about fitness on my go is the fact that I have these tools. It doesn't matter where you want me to meet, at your work, at a park, at one of the city gyms, even in your home. All I need is a six by six square space to train some. And people think that they need thousand dollars of equipment. They need a fifty, sixty dollar membership at a gym. The other thing I train in is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai kickboxing. Uh, second degree blue belt in it, uh, and also my instructor certification. So I'm actually legal to teach it in Canada. <laughs> it uh, it is actually an incredible martial art. Notice the difference between Kevin and myself. I'm going to demonstrate what we call a two push. Okay, so generally when it's uh, someone's coming up being aggressive, they come up and push in the chest the first time. So shall I uh, shall I be a, 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 a normal person on the street? Normal person, okay. yeah, yeah. No self defense training, no nothing. <laughs> Most people when they get pushed, <laughs> they're going to go back like that. So I'm going to come this way a little bit for you. So. Next time I do it, your hands are up. Basically, you don't want me coming into your space. There, his hands are up. If I throw a punch, you can block it. If I try and come in again, push, you can block it. Okay? He's going to let me push him again, though. Or going to push him again. Okay? So, I'm going to get you to do it to me. Okay. So, he's going to push with this hand on my chest. Okay? okay. I'm going to trap the wrist against my chest tight. I'm going to start bowing forward. As I bow forward, I grab the back of his elbow. As I start bowing forward more, both hands on the back of the elbow. If he tries to pull away, try and pull away. Okay. He can't. Okay. It might people think might think I'm bigger, I'm stronger than him. No, we do the same thing. So you push. He traps the wrist tight. Yeah, tight. Start bowing forward. Grab the back of the elbow. Back. Both hands now. Both hands, keep bowing forward. Okay, he's got it tight. Tight, keep it tight. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try and pull away. I can't. Yeah, but you've got another hand. Doesn't matter. If I try and swing at him, snap. All he has to do is bow forward fast, hard. My wrist is broken. Oh, really? yes. oh that makes me hurt. <laughs> if you're in a situation where you can just get away from it, you do it. Yep. But sometimes that's not always the case. And sometimes you're going to have to do what you don't want to do. Yep. And that's just the way it is. If that was the situation, if I did that to Kevin in the street, would you feel safe just trying to run away? If I actually started pushing? Not immediately. No. Yep. I need to control the situation first. Yep. He started looking at me like a piece of paper. <laughs> No, so I'll demonstrate it for you first so you feel know what it feels like. I'm not going to put pressure. Oh, you do the push thing. Yes. Okay. okay, so you go to push me. Uh, this hand. So you this can. hand's really bad. Okay, and then this we'll do it. Uh, then we'll switch. Okay. So back that way just a bit. Okay, so you're going to push. Push hard. Don't worry about hurting me. Back off. That's the first thing right there. If someone yelled out, if she yelled out, back off, in a crowded situation, my attention would be on her right away. Like, what's going on? Why is she yelling that? Yeah. Okay? So she goes to push me again. Hand trapped. Back of the elbow. You're feeling 
pressure right there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see? And I wasn't even bending into it hard or pulling hard. Yeah, I can see my wrist breaking if you bent more. Okay, now I'm going to do it to you. All right. Okay, so come forward just a little bit because I don't want to push you too hard. Okay. Push, hands up. Good. Okay, second push. This hand, there, tight, tight, tight. Grab the elbow, yep. Yeah. Start bowing forward. Both feet together, and you bend your knees and bow. No, bend your hips. Bow. Yep, yeah. keep going, keep going, keep going. Yep, yeah. let go. <laughs> yep, you oh, had I didn't it. even feel like I was doing it. You had it locked. Let's do it again. This time I'm going to try and pull away. So, there, yeah, tight, tight, tight. There, okay, you got it tight. But you control him. Yep. You, he might be moving you around, but you control him. You have, yeah, yeah. You have this arm. All you have to do, if I start trying to pull away, just start walking backward, backwards and bowing more. You'll drive me but to the ground. But what if somebody started going forward with you? Because I feel like if my feet are together, I'm kind of teetering. Nope. Do it again. Okay. Nice and tight, 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 tight. Okay. If I start pushing forward, just back up. See? Okay. Now, you have to be careful with this for one reason. I'll do it with Kevin. <laughs> Left to right. Uh, this way, yep. Okay. If you do not trap it tight against your chest, you can be in a world of trouble. Okay? So if he's got my hand here, he's got a trap, but he doesn't hold it tight enough against his chest, but he's got it here. So he doesn't have it tight. Yeah. And there. Oh. I can go forward, up over his shoulder, into a choke. The scary thing is about the choke. Three seconds. Mm -hmm. That's all I need to make you black out. Three seconds, ten seconds, permanent brain damage. Okay? If someone does try and attack you or choke you, do whatever it takes to break that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Hey, kick to the groin, go for it. Yeah. But basically, uh, the main thing is though, knowing that if someone my size comes up and tries to attack you, you can defend yourself. You know what to do, and you don't need to feel scared, okay? My professor in jiu-jitsu is a female. She's the only black belt jiu-jitsu instructor in Manitoba. She's five foot seven, 135 pounds. She has no problem putting me on my ass. I am literally two of her. I am 270 pounds. So, and there's been pictures, video, of her throwing me around. So it's amazing what can happen, okay? And also too, like Kevin's probably experienced it, chokes, okay? So we're gonna do a choke, okay? This is a choke, this someone comes up, grabs you from behind. Tight like this, okay? Right here, right here, he's gonna go up fast, okay? I'm not choking right now. So what he wants to do is two hands on one. Moment I get here, he's gonna reach up, on the outside, both hands. Oh, the yes. yeah, outside? Yep, on the right. outside, there. Right. Right there. That, I can't. Can I choke you? No. no. Okay. Right there is the weak part. Okay. Now all he has to do is basically base his feet up wide and bow. And I'm going for it. I'm going over his shoulder. I'm taking it with me. Yep. Doesn't matter how big, how strong. Now, okay, hold on, <laughs> hold on. They're going to say, yeah. yeah, but I'm a light guy. He can hold me up, right? But what happens is I'm going back. Yep. Now his I've got is, him is 100%. Hip. There's no way, right? Then I would just step out and... Yep. That's... A lot of people don't realize is if I have someone in a choke and they try and elbow me, they try and stomp on my foot or anything, the moment I've got this, the lock. The lock. He goes to step on my foot or elbow me. Go for it. Like an elbow or a step. Yeah. So, oh, out. And you felt that. Yeah. And that wasn't even tight or trying as hard as I can. So, that's the scary thing about self defense. Is if you're not ready for it, or you freeze, 
or you try and overthink it, you're going to be in trouble. My professor, her master, is from Brazil. He's actually done self-defense demonstrations with me. He's not much bigger than Kevin. And he said, in a situation, if I was attacking him, he would do whatever it needs to do to get away safe. If it meant smack to the ears as hard as he could so that it gave him a moment to get away, he'd do that. If there's another um, hold, if someone grabs you from behind, starts trying to push you, right? okay? So if Kevin's gonna try and push me from behind, like we'll just one hand, one hand, one hand. Okay. I'm gonna base, yeah. nice and tight, yeah. so he can't push me. Oh, I'm going to bring my arm up, down into his elbow, underneath. Nice. I'm gonna step behind him. This is nice and tight. Mm -hmm. All I have to do is hip forward and his shoulder is gone. My professor did that to me and he put a lot of pressure on it and nearly popped my shoulder. But he said if that was the situation, what it called for, he would have done it. Yeah. People don't realize that. If I have him in a choke, three seconds, and you're out, then you don't know what I'm going to be doing to you. Don't freeze. Don't panic. Just remember your training. And that's, that's thousands of drills I've done. That two push, if I do it now at speed with Kevin, it would look a lot faster. So we're going to do it at speed, okay? So he's going to push me. Just uh, with that shoulder or that arm. So push. Yep. Yeah. So push. Actually, here. Yep. Yeah. So push, boom. Okay. Yeah. Back off. He wants to do it again. That's how fast. And he felt that. So. <laughs> you, I noticed you gripped and pulled too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm pulling it. Yeah. I'm pulling him into my chest. Yeah. Okay. okay. If I don't pull him into my chest, his arm's going slipping behind me. Yeah. And then I'm choked. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. I've been choked. I've been blacked out choked. <laughs> it's not fun. But it teaches me that I don't want to be there. If I have to, I'm going to throw the person. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. And it's scary. When you're watching drills, you see always there's a slow motion aspect to it. You want to learn the movements and how you're doing things, right? Mm -hmm. On the street, there is no slow motion, nope. right? But it's that muscle memory and yeah, it's avoid first, yep. defend second, debilitate third. Yep. No. If that was a situation, yeah, I'd just keep backing up until Kevin was down on the ground. I'd let go of the arm and gone. Yeah. Yep. Jason, I yep. have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've been reading a lot of stuff on, on the police releases, and most people, there'll be an altercation and they're just pushing and shoving, somebody comes out a knife. So knife fights. Knife fights. Okay. Okay. If he does say have a knife, okay. One thing. First thing, right there. Notice how far away he is with that knife. He has to come closer to me. By the time he comes closer to me, I'm backing away. I'm still backing away. I'm backing away all the time, all the time. I'm not letting him get close to me. That's the thing. A lot of people let them get close. If I am close, this right. This is. is yeah, right. This is close. I don't want you any closer than this. This is more comfortable. Okay. And you take a cut to the hand before you take a cut to the body. Yep. There's no vital organs in your hand. So, yep. right. right there. I'll, I'll, I'll take a cut there. Yeah. A couple of stitches on five. Yeah. I so take a cut here. He takes it to the side or takes it down. However, yeah. if he cuts me here or stabs me here, game over. Game over. That's kidneys. You're not getting up. Doesn't matter how strong, how tough you are. You get stabbed in the kidneys, you're down. So, here. Now that's how close he has to get. He goes to stab me. <laughs> he goes to stab me. No way. I was not getting in there. Nope. Nope. So, but he, if he does decide that he's stupid enough and tries to go in for an underhand stab like this, go for it. Oh. Block. And then turn. Oh. Can you do that again? <laughs> but, yeah, yep. okay, you can see. Yeah, yeah, I'm, okay. So, he goes to step, I'm walking, I'm pushing it out away from me. I'm now out of balance already. Both hands on the back of his arm, 
gripping together. Oh. Now, I don't, I'm not putting, I'm not using strength, I'm not using a lot of force. Leverage. Leverage. Okay. I had to let go of the fence. <laughs> I had to let go of the fence. Yeah. <laughs> See? And Good, I'm going to practice with my son. Yeah, it's... And like I said, it's a lot of repetitions, a lot of practice. What if they stab you from the top? What's the, just stab like that? Yeah. Oh. All right. So, yeah, that hand. So if he's going to stab overhand like this. I'm coming at you. Yep. Oh, 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 oh I already anticipated what was happening. This. Yeah. Both hands here. Oh. Turn. So. Yeah. Oh. Oh. I'm not. So you go the opposite way. Now. Yes. I'm walking with this hand, hand underneath, both hands here. Down. The Koshi Guruma literal translation means arm and head throw. So basically, I came in on this guy throwing my hardest punch. Not allowed in competition. No. <laughs> Self defense wise? Yes. <laughs> Always. Yep. So I threw this punch at him. He sent me ass over to each other. Even though I'm. Over a foot taller than him. Going back. Yeah. Ooh. Nope, nope. That's a, that's a different throw. The Koshi Guruma, you say if you throw a right hook at me. Right. So he goes like that. Nope, like a, like wide. Oh, right here. Boom. Blocking here. On the bicep. I'm going to step in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Grab the back of his armpit. Hip up. And just like that. I can hold Kevin like that, no problem. So, and you could hold him too. Yep. Looks kind of friendly. <laughs> Not when you actually go through the whole thing. <laughs> and then it's throw. Yeah. But the guy, like I said, five foot four, 145 pounds, picked me up like that and set me ass over Tika to land on the ground. And Master Baron's sitting there going, <laughs> because the fact is, it shows you that it doesn't matter how big you are, how strong you are, if you know the technique, you know the timing and you've practiced enough. You can make someone like me tap out, no problem. Koshi Garuma, like I said, arm and head throw. If I did it on this ground here and actually threw the guy, went with the motion and slammed into him and rolled off of him, he'd be hitting the ground at 2,500 PSI. Collarbones, gone. Ribs, gone. Internal damage, more than likely, especially with someone 270 pounds landing on you and going over. So the question of a knife is one thing, but the question of a gun is something completely different. Okay. Pulls a gun on me. Okay. So I'm not going to pop right yeah. now. If here's here's the thing. Often you're not going to see somebody running at you from a distance. If they have a gun and they're at a distance, yeah. you're just what do they need? and get yourself as peacefully out of that conversation. But if somebody comes up to you and you know pulls a gun out at close range, by the time he's here, same thing. I'm coming forward. Yeah. I am not backing up. I'm attacking. Yeah. Okay. The moment he reaches behind him for that. Yeah. What do you have there? Why are you reaching behind? Yep. Yeah. Why do you have a weapon? Yeah. What are you intending to do with it? Hold him there until the cops come. Mm -hmm. And that's if not he, difficult to do. Nope. He has all the leverage. If he struggles. It freaking hurts. Yeah. Right if he now. struggles, back. Yeah. Neither How do you pull your phone out though to huh? call the cops? Huh? How do you pull your phone out to call the cops while you're in there? I'm See? yelling at someone to call the cops. Well, if no one's around. Then I drop him and run away. Yeah. <laughs> then you do what you have to do. Yep. And that's the thing. Notice when he went back there, boom, I was straight forward. Don't hesitate. If he's far enough back, he pulls up the gun from here, gone. I'm running away. I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just looking for cover. Because at that point, there is no. It's hard to shoot into your target, too. You, yeah, yeah. You, most people aren't going to shoot because they're not looking to kill you. The person who is looking to kill you for whatever reason, it's too late. Yep. They want to kill you. So whatever you can do to get yourself away, whatever it takes, yep. right? So always keep that in mind. There's two possibilities. 
they don't really want to kill you or they do want to kill you, right? Either way, at that distance, you run. So, knowing your space, knowing who's around you, trusting your guts, and not being afraid to do what needs to be done if you need to do it. And with that, I'll finish there. Jason, yep. do you have courses for women, little old ladies? Uh, that, uh, like with, uh, I train out of karate, uh, Charles with Karate, mm -hmm. on uh, the professor's changing it to Sunday and Wednesday nights now at seven o'clock, mm -hmm. and we train anyone that wants to come and train. Doesn't matter their age, doesn't matter their skill level, we work with everyone. So it's in self-defense? Self-defense will teach you whatever you want to need, need to know about self-defense and how to defend yourself. And like I said, she is a uh, first degree black belt and she knows what she's doing. And I actually still train with her myself. And like we actually fight each other. And in all the times we fought each other, I've only caught her twice. Yeah. So, and that says something right there. And this is like ground fighting where I'm trying to submit her, I'm trying to choke her. She's trying to choke me and <laughs> trying to break my arm too. And we're going back and forth like that. And it's amazing, like when someone sees pretty much someone Victoria's size taking on someone my size and winning. So if you want to come out and try it out, she generally has like a free first session to see if you like it and see if you want to focus in on it. Okay, I'll get more information from you. Yep. I find a lot of women do have, because I know that I've read that women are not accustomed to physical uh, violence, physical, uh, and so if they hesitate, I know that's happened to me where I had to protect myself, mm -hmm. and I, I had to make myself do it, because otherwise, you know, that's the, the only from. black belt in Manitoba is a woman. Oh, is that right? Well, that, that yeah. may, be, may be true, but generally, you know, I had to make Actually, myself. There's, there's, um, were you there when we did that? Um, there was that video act we did on the second workshop. Oh, Lisa was there. Sam? Yeah, Sam. What? Uh, Troy, Sam. it's the same dojo that Troy was part of, I Yeah, and like, you don't want to go up against her either. Yeah, no, I don't do that. I mean, I'm just saying yeah. that that's generally the way, the way women view the violence. There's some um, shy guys too as well. I know that. No, yeah. I find that um, it's 50 50. 50 50, okay. Okay, I've seen guys that shy away from a lot of stuff, uh, violence-wise, just because they know if they get into an altercation, they're getting wiped with the floor. That's good to know. That. That's just, to, you know, the empirical and that it's yeah. as But also, too, to like, I, I believe everyone yeah. can learn it. Some people, like Lisa, you might have a little bit more obstacles in your way to getting to that point where you feel comfortable with it. But that's, that's with anything in life. If you're trying something that's that brings you anxiety that you're not comfortable with, it's gonna take more time and patience and practice to get to the point where, okay, I, I have no problem if someone Jason size attacks me in, in the classroom. So with that we can practice, that I can, if I need it, I can defend myself. That's the thing, if you need this. And unfortunately the scary thing is a lot of people, they do need it now because they live in certain situations or certain areas where it's not safe to walk even during the daytime. Mm -hmm. But it still doesn't have to be the first option. option. No, no. It can be the second, third, fourth option, whatever you need to do to feel safe. But it helps you become, it helps you open up to being aware of your surroundings. Mm -hmm. I think at the very least, right? You start to, you start to internalize it and think, Always, what's around me? What's around me? Who's around me? What are they doing? How do they look? How do I? What's my gut saying? All of these things you start reading your own experience of your surroundings. That alone is worth showing up for a few classes, for sure. And also too, like for you, Lisa, like I said, if you just want to sit and watch, and just like that's actually how he little Gracie learned. Yeah, he sat and watched his brother training people. Then one day his brother actually was sick or couldn't show up for the class, Helio took over and trained people. And it was no different than when Carlos trained them. So some people can actually learn just by watching it, 
some people have to actually do it. Um, and a combination of the two. I like watching it, but I also find that if, if I practice it more and more, I get faster and faster at it. And like you said, for something like that, if you feel comfortable doing it, go for it. All the more power to you because it is empowering. So any more questions or? No, no? it's great. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. Thanks. No problem. Thanks. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.